Dr. Ismail, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Connection. Our uh, topic is pancreatic surgery. The subtitle is New Hope. I'm going to start with a big word. Hepatobiliary. It's a big word, an important meaning. What does a hepatobiliary surgeon do exactly? Well, thanks for having me today. A hepatobiliary or hepatopancreatic biliary surgeon is a surgeon that operates on the liver, the bile ducts, and the gallbladder, and the pancreas. He operates on both cancers and benign disease or injuries to these structures. You just mentioned cancer. We're going to talk specifically pancreatic cancer. So let's start with the pancreas. What does it do? So the pancreas is an organ in, uh, in the middle of your stomach towards the back. It's a retroperitoneal organ. Uh, it basically has two functions, an exocrine function where it secretes hor uh, enzymes to digest the food and an endocrine function where it secretes hormones in your bloodstream to regulate your sugars like insulin and other hormones um, that regulate the rest of your gastrointestinal tract. Okay. What causes cancer of the pancreas and are there early warning signs to look for? Well, we know, we know a lot about pancreas cancer, uh, but in terms of etiology or the causes, we don't know all that. We know that uh, there is a familial component to it. Um, pancreas cancer tends to run in families and we call it familial pancreatic cancer. And there are other uh, genomic mutations uh, associated with other cancers that present with pancreas cancer. So hereditary breast, ovarian, or colon cancer amongst the cancers patients may develop are pancreatic cancers. And um, 5 to 10 percent of patients with pancreas cancer have a family member who has had pancreas cancer before. There are other risk factors um, such as smoking. Uh, heavy alcohol consumption, which will cause inflammation of the pancreas and lead to pancreas cancers. And there's a lot of research about um, different blood type groups and diabetes and obesity that may link those factors to developing pancreas cancer. Are there early warning signs to look for? Uh, unfortunately, pancreas cancer kind of sneaks up on you. It's located very deep in your body and has non-specific symptoms and signs. Uh, so by the time that the patient presents with symptoms, uh, it, it might be too late. The symptoms generally are pain, uh, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, and jaundice or yellow discoloration of the eyes. This is what you look for, as well as um, weight loss that is unexplained, and early satiety or you feel full very easily. Okay. Pancreatic cancer is one of the more frightening cancers. It has a very low survival rate, historically. But we learned that there have been some uh, significant advancements in how it's treated. Talk to us about that a little bit. Well, about 50, there are 50,000 new cases of pancreas cancer every year. and. Uh, uh, notoriously, pancreas cancer uh, has been linked with a very low survival of uh, only 5% at the end of five years. Uh, this is because the location where the pancreas cancer starts is very closely related to major blood vessels and bile ducts, uh, so it has only a little room to grow before it causes major complications and spreads into your bloodstream. With more recent um, innovations in chemotherapy regimens and radiation therapy, as well as better surgical technique and patient selection, that 5% five five-year survival has improved to 30% uh, over five-year survival. And amongst those 30%, it's very variable. Some patients um, live up to 10 years, if not longer, and others are less. Okay. Give us some detail about the types of surgery for pancreatic cancer. What are the options and how difficult and challenging are these surgeries? So these are uh, pretty difficult surgeries. Uh, the pancreas has a, is an organ that has a head and a body and tail. Uh, if the tumor arises in the head, the patient needs a Whipple procedure. And if it arises in the body and, or the tail, he needs or she needs the tail of the pancreas out. Uh, a Whipple procedure is where we take out the head of the pancreas, but also the small intestines that wrap around the pancreas, the end of the stomach, the common bile duct, and the gallbladder. And then it involves replumbing the whole system with bringing a loop of intestines to connect to the pancreas, the end of the bile duct that's resected, and the stomach. Uh, on the other hand, a, a distal pancreatectomy where we remove the tail of the pancreas for a tumor located there is an easier operation where we only remove that tail off. Now between the two surgeries they're pretty difficult and of course the Whipple is more difficult. 
and the difficulty lies in not only resecting all these structures, but the tumor is very close to two major blood vessels feeding all the intestines in the body. Uh, so the skill comes in removing the tumor with negative margins while avoiding any injuries and giving a favorable outcome. Despite improvements in treatment, survival rates, as you just mentioned a moment ago, are still low. And you talked about this. Let's give it a little color. What's the average rate of survival for a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer? So for all comers, it's still a 5 to 10 percent in five years. And uh, the reason being that only 15 to 20 percent of patients who show up are surgical candidates. 80 percent of patients who present to the physician uh, already cannot have surgery because of tumor growth to the bile duct or the vessels that feed the intestines. But if we select, if the patients do present early and we do select those patients out and treat them with the newer chemotherapies and the newer surgeries, we have survivals over 30 percent at five years, which is six times higher. For those with pancreatic cancer who are candidates for surgery, how important is it to find a cancer center with a fellowship-trained hepatobiliary surgeon? Yeah, it is actually pretty important. The reason being in the past, um, because of how general surgeons did a very broad array of cases, uh, a fellowship in surgical oncology or hepatobiliary surgery was not as important. But as we've become much more specialized now and many surgeons rely on extra fellowship training to get that extra kick and subspecialty, it becomes very important to have someone trained in hepatobiliary surgery. The, the, there's only, there are only 16 or 20 fellowships across the country and maybe 24 in North America. And between France and the UK, together, all, all together, I apologize, uh, are about 30 to 35 fellows a year. So it's a very select group of very well-trained um, surgeons. And the, the training is based on high volume centers and uh, a strong exposure to a different uh, array of diseases related to the liver and the pancreas that uh, other, other general surgeons might not have. Best that such skills never be needed. So what can we do to reduce our risk for developing pancreatic cancer in the first place? Uh, well, there are uh, simple things like uh, watching your weight, adjusting your diet to increase your fiber intake, avoiding smoking and heavy drinking, uh, realizing that uh, you have pancreas cancer or breast or ovarian cancer in your family and informing your physician for earlier screening and detection and then keeping an eye out for any unusual symptoms that you may have or unexplained weight loss to approach your physician quickly. Okay. What do you want patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer to know about current treatments for their disease? I want them to know that uh, there is still hope, that uh, we have a lot our outcomes have improved markedly, uh, that there are newer techniques now to operate, including laparoscopic and robotic surgery with tiny holes to remove the, the tumors. I want them to know that we have stronger chemotherapeutic regimens that have shown to improve survival, better radiation therapy for uh, negative margins, and improved surgical technique and less surgical complications to get them through this. Um, I, I would recommend that any patient who has a diagnosis of pancreas cancer to come forward knowing that if he's the right patient or it's an early stage disease, we can definitely help him. Just give us a quick definition. What is a negative margin? A negative margin is um, the, the location of the pancreas cancer is very close to major vessels. Uh, the margin is the cut edge of the specimen between the, the tumor and the vessels. We try to make sure the margins are negative, meaning all the cancer has been removed at that cut edge of the vessel. And w with our better understanding of anatomy, better imaging studies, and the radiation therapy, the rate of this margin being negative and rendering the patient disease-free is much higher now. Very well. Doctor, I learned a lot. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.